So on to part two of this assignment where we're finding the area, and area is probability, underneath the curve, a normal curve, but this time between two points. Last time we just used one point. Now here's our diagram that I've provided for you, and you can print this and label it, and that is such an important thing. A lot of times students will spend 30 minutes to an hour struggling with a problem, feeling very, very frustrated, um, and then when they sit down with the teacher, the first thing the teacher says to them is, label this drawing, and they solve it in their head as soon as they've labeled it. So you can either spend, you know, an extra 30 seconds labeling something, or else you spend 30 minutes of frustration because you're trying to keep it all in your head. Once it's written down, a lot of times things will make sense to you, okay? So print that, label it. Our problem is very similar to the first one. It says the manager of the deli counter has observed that lunch meat orders follow a normal distribution. Once again, the typical lunch meat order is one pound, and remember we said this is mu, and you would label that as one pound with a standard deviation of 0 0.25 pounds, right? Now, the question this time is a little different, and it says what is the probability that a customer will buy between, between, so that's the difference. Right, that's the difference this time, between 0.75 pounds and 1.5 pounds. Now, I did go ahead and label those on the diagram for you. This is our x-axis, and we've labeled our points. Now, the first thing that we need to do is enter in, we're prompted here, the upper value. So I'm going to click in cell B25. My upper value is 1.5. Press Enter. Now, I'm asked to enter the lower value. Well, that was 0.75 pounds. Right. I'm asked again to enter the mean, and in this problem, it's the same, one pound. And I'm asked to enter the standard deviation, 0.25. Now, remember that Excel, your calculator, some charts, not all charts, remember because the chart uh, with some textbooks, like our textbook, is going to go from this point to the mean. But other charts, and definitely all Excel and all calculators, will instead give you an area, and I'm going to show you here. Remember, if I end talk about this point, my calculator or Excel will give me the area under the curve from that point to negative infinity always to the left. Now, let's insert another distance. When I enter in this point, this 0.75, I will get the area under the curve again from that point to negative infinity. What does that tell me about how I'm going to get my answer? Won't I have to take this entire area and from it subtract this area. See how labeling can help us understand what we're going to need to do? Okay. In the last problem, we learned the function norm dist, which is how we calculate the area under a normal curve from a particular value. How did we do that? Well, I'm going to click in cell E25. I'm going to use my insert function button. Remember that we were looking for normal distributions, and you can read through the list of functions, but this is the function we're demonstrating, norm dist, and it says, what is the x value? Now, I'm working with the upper value. I can either type 1.5, or I'm just going to click the cell. Now, I'm going to click where it says mean. I could type 1, or I'm going to type the cell. I'm going to click where it says standard deviation. And again, I'm going to click the cell. And as we discussed in the last example, uh, when we're talking about continuous values, the answer to cumulative is true. Click OK. So the area under the curve from this particular point, 1.5, all the way to negative infinity is 0.9772. OK? Well, that's only one part. This time we have two points to deal with. So let's continue on to our second point. I'm going to click in cell E26. 
and I'm going to calculate the probability from this lower value. Well, again, the function is norm dist. Now, once you find it the first time, notice that it shows up here in our most recently used list. Again, the x value, this time it's the lower one, the mean, the standard deviation, and the answer to cumulative is yes, true. Okay, as you would expect, a smaller area, right? Now, remember, neither one of these answers is the total answer. What we want is the area between. As we've labeled, we have this entire area and we have this area, and in order to get this area in yellow, we, goodness, what's happening here? Excuse me, I'm sorry, my screen flipped on me. We need to subtract one from the other. Now, in Excel, we go into the calculator mode. We tell Excel that we want to do some math by typing the equal sign. That changes into the calculator mode. If I then click on my first area, type the minus sign, which is the hyphen, then click on the next cell where I calculated the second area. I've got my formula in there, press enter, and look, we have the answer. The area between 0.75 and 1.5 is 0.8186. Okay. Now, to express this as a percentage, I could multiply it by 100. Something I like to do is to use this opportunity to go ahead and round and truncate this. In other words, I don't want these extra places after the decimal hanging out in there. And even if your screen is set, and I'm going to show you this, even if this is all you see, it is not rounded. Your computer knows that there are many, many, and, what, and sometimes your computer is just simply your calculator. It knows all those decimal places. You know why? Because, I'm sorry, let me get this back to a reasonable size, because it's not storing the number, it's storing the formula. Just like here, it's not storing the number, it's got the formula. So you've got all these formulas which result in all these extraneous decimal places. So I'm going to take this opportunity to retype this so that I know for sure I don't have all those extra decimal places. 8186. Now, I've typed it in there. This particular cell is, is set to round to two decimal places, but I want to format it as a percentage, and I do want to go ahead and display two more places after the decimal. See how I did that? So, the manager wanted to know what is the probability that a customer will buy between 0.75 and 1.5 pounds of lunch meat. That means what is the area under the curve, and we calculated that using our norm dist function. Might be fun if you'd like to go back and change the values. For example, I could put in 2, and look how all the numbers change. And I could put in uh, that, and then I would very quickly know the answer. Now, except this is not changing because remember I typed that in there manually. But here you can see the probability changing as I replace and substitute various values. Now, if you do experiment, just make sure that you put it back so that you're answering the problem question uh, as you're done here. But this is the, one of the uh, beautiful things about Excel is that then I can go back and change the numbers so that I know the probability, in other words, the area under the curve between two points. Now, in this example, let me also further emphasize that uh, these two points, one was to the right of the mean and one was to the left of the mean. Okay, so uh, keep that in mind, and I hope that this example was helpful.